Golf Effect, set for the Birds 2022 here in San Jose, California. I'm your host, Ulysses Iñiguez from Microchip Technology, and we're here in booth 218. If you're here, make sure to stop by and look at our demos and talk to our experts. But if you can't make it, go to www.microchip.com forward slash sensors converge. Today we'll be talking to Ross Satchel about the 8-bit MCU demo wall. Hi, hi Ross. Hi Ulysses, how you doing? Good, good. So tell me about these demos that you have here. Okay, so this first one we used an array of NeoPixels or WS2812 individually addressable RGB LEDs. And so we have a little demo where we can switch between different patterns. So we have a fire demo, we have a different one where you can adjust the hue and, uh, and switch between, and in a moment it'll do some scrolling text as well. But the main thing on this one is usually if you do this kind of thing with an 8 bit MCU, uh, you have to run the CPU at about 100% all the time. But what we've done is we've used core independent peripherals to set up the timing protocol, and it's a custom timing protocol for these. And so that way we're just able to send the data that's required through and have the core independent peripherals break that down into the ones and zeros for us. And as a result, our CPU runs at about 20 to 30%. That's awesome. That's very useful. What about our weather station demo right here? So this one uses a I2C based BME280 uh, temperature, humidity and pressure sensor and then it has an ambient light sensor that uses a analog output and it's just uh, working through our PICQ41 and we're getting uh, uh, the readout on the OLED display here. All right, awesome. And what about this PIR person detection demo and how hard was it to set up? So we gave this open-ended project to our intern, Ethan, and we said we wanted to detect a person, figure out a sensor to use, and it has to flash an LED, and it has to also then output on the uh, display when a person is detected, and then, of course, when someone leaves as well, that they're not detected. And so we got him to draw up uh, initially what all the equivalent hardware would be, which, uh, so the output of this is an analog output, and it uses about 2.2 volts, but this guy is operating at 3.3 volts, so he had to use the internal op amp to amplify the signal to fill the window of the ADC, take a burst average of all the readings, and then pass that through a comparator that is set a threshold with with a digital to analog converter or a DAC. And then after that, we found we were getting some interference from the fluorescent lights. So then he set up uh, two D latches in sequence and uh, used a timer to filter out all of that stuff. And he did all of that setup. Uh, through MCC, uh, which is our MPLAB code configurator, a uh, graphical user interface, and his actual application code was less than 50 lines. Wow, that's awesome. And then our smart home security sensor, uh, what makes this one different than other ones? So a normal home uh, window uh, sensor uses a magnet, so we have a magnet here, but a normal one uses a reed switch, which is just a mechanical switch that closes or opens based on the, the magnetic field. But they're really easy to uh, trick because you can just put a magnet up against the reed switch and then open the window and the burglar takes all your stuff. But with this one, we're using a three axis magnetic sensor here. Uh, so when you try to, like I have a magnet here, if I try to trick it, I set off the alarm, which is the red LED there. Um, Let's just close it to get the threshold back. There we go. Uh, and the other thing is, is you can keep the window open a crack. It doesn't have to be locked, closed all the time. So you can get some air going through as well. And then once you open the window as well, you can also uh, that sets off the alarm as well. And so, and then it has a Bluetooth chip in there as well that sends the information to you. So say you're sitting in the lounge room and someone opens the bedroom and climbs through the window, and then you see that, and it sends you an alert. Hey, that's definitely more secure. Well. Also, it uses multi-voltage I.O. So the, the magnet, three-axis magnetic sensor here uses 1.8 volts, whereas the microcontroller here is 3.3 volts. So usually you would have to use level shifting hardware, so that increases your bill of material or bond cost. Uh, it also adds complexity and also increases propagation delay, noise, and there's all sorts of issues with that. But the AVRDB offers what we call multi-voltage I.O., which means you have a separate power rail uh, that is powered by a second power supply, and we call that VDD I.O. 2 and you have a whole port there that you can run everything off and you can run all of your normal signals so you have your PWM, your SBI, your I2C, all the signals normally and they're all thresholded as they move through the MVIO so you don't have to do any of that stuff yourself. Wow, that's awesome. What about our last demo right here? What is this? 
Our last demo, this was made by one of our uh, new college grads, Nate. And so this is a force sensitive resistor. And so the harder you press, it changes the resistance. And then we've used a WS2812 grid array here. And so as I press, it lights it up in sequence. And then once you get to the end, it starts flashing through. And it also shows on the monitor here how hard I'm pressing from zero all the way to up, up, up to 100%. It also sends the data across to your phone or tablet by Bluetooth, so you can read that there as well. All right, well, thank you, Ross. Thank you. And for our audience, if you're here, make sure to come by booth 218. And unfortunately, if you can't make it, you can go to www.microchip.com forward slash sensors converge. And stay tuned for more live content.